I have a confession to make. At the age of 25, I had all the outward signs of being successful. A doctorate degree, check. Residency training, check. Making a great six-figure income, check. But the reality, you see, the reality was is that I was broke and I didn't know it. I was financially overconfident and I didn't realize it. I was convincing myself that I was on a path towards achieving financial wellness and I wasn't. I was carrying feelings of shame and guilt and regret without acknowledging it. And I was limiting my true potential because I was focused inward on cleaning up my financial mess rather than being able to focus outward towards opportunity. You see, that's my confession. And unfortunately, I'm not alone. That's also true for thousands of pharmacists across the country. And that has to change. You see, in 2002, when I started pharmacy school, I didn't have a penny of debt. My parents had done an incredible job of teaching me the importance of hard work and teaching me how to allocate my money between saving, spending, and giving. Fast forward to 2009, just seven years later, I had completed my pharmacy training, I completed my residency program, and I had over $200,000 in debt. Over $200,000 in debt. It all seemed so normal and manageable, I told myself. It's not even stupid debt, I rationalized. No credit card debt, no fancy cars, no extravagant toys. But I was confused. I was confused as to why do I feel like I'm living paycheck to paycheck despite making a six-figure income? You see, I had thought I was alone in feeling these feelings. I thought everyone else has this figured out. But as I started to talk with more of my pharmacist colleagues across the country, I kept hearing some of the same things over and over again. Things like I'm overwhelmed with my student loan debt. I'm confused about how to best budget, save, and invest for the future. I'm frustrated because I make a good income, but I feel like I'm not progressing financially. And I'm anxious because I feel like I'm financially behind. I'm overwhelmed. I'm confused, frustrated. I'm anxious. You see, I had arrived at the very unwelcome destination where my expectations met my reality. My expectations were that I'd be making a great income. I wouldn't have any financial worries. And if we could be honest here for a moment, my expectations were that I'd be living the good life. I'd be living the doctor life. My reality was, is that I was swimming in a boatload of student loan debt and I was overwhelmed. I was confused. I was frustrated and I was anxious. And while I'm on a mission to help transform the financial wellness of the pharmacist workforce, what I just shared in my circumstances, my story, and my feelings certainly are not unique to me. They're not unique to the profession of pharmacy, and perhaps they even resonate with some of you here today. You see, in pharmacy, our graduates come out with an average debt load of $170,000. $170,000. Assuming 6% interest, that's a monthly payment of $1,887 for 10 years, 120 payments to pay off the debt. $1,887 for 10 years, 120 payments to pay off the debt. We see pharmacists all across the country that are struggling to navigate this as they make the transition from student into practitioner life. And we need, we must have a financially well pharmacist workforce. This number has become so normal in our profession. We've become so numb to this reality that when I speak with a group of soon to be or recent graduates, I get no emotional reaction to that number, none. 
you would think it's monopoly money. And it's not. We need to wake up and realize that it's in the best interest of the pharmacist workforce and the patients that we serve that these individuals are financially well. You see, pharmacists are arguably the most accessible healthcare provider in the United States. There are over 300,000 pharmacists all across the country that make up the backbone and the infrastructure of safe and effective medication use in this country. These individuals often enter the profession for their desire to help people and to serve others. And they're really good at it. They have a gift for that. And we need to let them do that. We need to let them focus on serving patients without feeling like they're suffocated financially. You see, we're at a point in our profession where we need big ideas. We need disruptive ideas in our profession to continue to evolve so that we can take care of the health and well-being of our nation at a lower cost. But here's the problem. Big ideas, disruptive ideas, these ideas rarely come from someone who's living in a state of financial stress. Someone who's overwhelmed with their student loan debt, who's confused about how to best budget, save, and invest for the future, who's frustrated by the fact that they make a good income but they're not progressing financially. Someone who's feeling anxious that they're falling behind financially. Any one of those feelings can be a killer of a big idea, a killer of a disruptive idea, a killer of a creative idea. So what are we to do about this? What are we to do about this? You see, I believe there are three things that we should focus on. Yes, that will help to transform the financial well-being of the pharmacist workforce, but also to transcend to many other professions as well. Number one is personal finance education. Personal finance education. Ideally, financial education and financial literacy starts at the K-12 level and continues as required curriculum throughout the undergraduate and graduate levels. States are slowly adopting the K-12 requirement across the country, but we must not wait. I would call on all 140 plus colleges of pharmacy across the country to adopt the recommendation that was approved by the 2021 American Pharmacists Association House of Delegates that calls on the inclusion of personal finance education and literacy training in the doctor of pharmacy program. We should not mitigate the importance of personal finance education for all of our students, even at the graduate level. So number one is we need required personal finance education in the doctor of pharmacy program. Number two is we need to support new graduates. We must support our new graduates. Speaking from firsthand experience and working with thousands of pharmacists across the country, that transition from student to practitioner and the decade that follows brings many financial challenges and many financial choices. It's typically in this decade where we're focused on student loan repayment. We're navigating new employer benefits with a job We're establishing insurance policies. We're starting to think about saving for the future and retirement. And perhaps even this is a phase of life where individuals are getting married, buying a home, and starting a family. There's a lot going on financially during this critical transition period, and we must support individuals so that they can build a strong financial foundation upon which they can grow throughout the rest of their career. So I'd call on our colleges of pharmacy and their alumni associations, our state and national pharmacy associations to join us in supporting their members and providing personal finance education through this critical transition period. So that's number two, we need to support our new graduates. And number three is we need to reduce the debt load. We must reduce the debt load. Federal student loan debt in the United States is a $1.6 trillion problem that touches 43 million borrowers. $1.6 trillion that touches 43 million borrowers. Addressing this issue is certainly complex and it requires a multi-pronged approach, but let me suggest three things that we can focus on. Number one is that we need enhanced entrance and exit counseling for borrowers. I'm not talking about the check the box type of training, but rather meaningful education for new borrowers so they understand 
the construct and the makeup of their student loans. They understand the implications of those student loans as well as education to support borrowers as they navigate how to best repay those student loans. Number two is we need to see a flattening of tuition and fee increases so that it does not outpace the rate of inflation as it has in recent history. And number three is we need to see substantial improvements to the federal loan repayment system, which would include a lowering of the federal loan interest rates, a simplification of the repayment options, as well as an expansion of the federal forgiveness programs. There's a lot of work to be done, but it matters. Financial wellness matters. You see, in 2002, I didn't have a penny of debt. In 2009, just seven years later, I had over $200,000 in debt. I was overwhelmed. I was confused. I was frustrated. And I was anxious. I was feeling like a failure, yes, financially, but that also crept into my identity as a pharmacist, as a teacher, as a father, and as a husband. Thankfully, in the fall of 2015, on November 6th of 2015, my wife Jess and I, through a lot of hard work, through a lot of humility, and through a lot of a commitment of figuring it out together, were able to hit submit on that very last payment of over $200,000 in debt. And it was through that journey, it was through that journey that I learned firsthand, we learned firsthand, what it meant to have the suffocating feeling of being financially unwell and the freedom that comes from being financially well. And so I would like to close at this TEDx event to make a statement that I intend to lead this expedition in my profession, to be the facilitator and transformation of change in our workforce to develop a financially well pharmacist workforce. I intend to lead the change and transformation, change like that experienced by Rosie, a pharmacist out in California, who through working very hard for three years, working over 80 hours per week and making a commitment to up her financial IQ, was able to pay off her student loans. In her words, I've paid off $180,000 of student loans and I'm debt freaking free. Or change like that of Mike, a pharmacist in Boston who making a commitment to learn about financial education and literacy during his fellowship training was able to build such a strong financial foundation that he's now able to invest in real estate to both grow and diversify his income. Or change like that experienced by Kim and Kyle and Ashley, three pharmacists who recently combined were able to have over $700,000 of student loans that were forgiven and forgiven tax-free all because of their commitment to understand the nuances of student loan repayments and student loan repayment strategies. Over $700,000 forgiven and forgiven tax-free. So I want you to imagine for a moment, I want you to imagine for a moment that you're financially secure, that all of your needs both now and in the future have been met. You're financially free. How would you live your life? What change might you make? What big ideas might you pursue? You see, today is the day that we make a commitment to live towards being financially well and to becoming financially free. Thank you very much.